And finally, with the score still nothing, nothing in the game, Danny White kicked for Dallas. Bobby Hammond, the free agent, with the ball. Hit Ooh. savagely. Fumble. The ball picked up by Ernie Joins. Hit savagely. Fumble. <laughs> and now picked up by Saldi. Skids in. Touchdown. That's the Dallas defense you'll see next Monday night against the big red St. Louis Cardinals. The rest of the highlights you'll be seeing at halftime. In Denver, Pittsburgh, big game. Are the Bronx for real? Well, they proved they were, and they proved it early. Right here, late in the first quarter. Denver leading 7-0. Rick Upchurch taking Walden's punt and going right up the middle. Beautiful wedge hole, and Rick Upchurch goes 87 yards. Touchdown, that made it 14-0. Look at his stats on the day. The best special team player in football. And Craig Morton had himself a fine day with this pass and great catch by Haven Moses. So the Bronx are an authentic powerhouse. They beat the Steelers 21-7 at the Houston Air. You could see it in that game against the Giants a week ago. They're against the Vikes. Here the handoff from Green Morris. Number 24, what a day he had. 21 yards, touchdown. Point after block. That made the score 20 to nothing. This was second quarter action. In the third quarter, the Cardinals kept pouring it on. Handoff, Jim Hart to Terry Metcalf. And Terry first around the right side, 11 yards, touchdown, 27 to nothing over the Minnesota Vikings. The Cardinals wound up the winners, 27 to 7. Next week, the Cardinals riding high face the unbeaten Dallas Cowboys right here on Monday Night Football. Jack Silverdome and this player tip off on the surprising events of the day. Charlie Weaver, number 59, second quarterback James Harris of the Chargers. He was sacked three times on the day, net loss 31 yards. The team struggled at nothing, nothing until rookie Rick Kane of San Jose State poured in in the third quarter for a touchdown. That made it seven to nothing. Detroit, Detroit went on to win it 20 to nothing. Upset, first NFC victory over an AFC team this year. Tom Bettis, the new head coach of the Kansas City Chiefs. Paul Wiggin out. Going against Green Bay at this point, fourth quarter action. Kansas City winning 17-3. Stenaru kicking off to the little speedster 84, Stevie Odom. Watch closely. Odom veering to his right. Handing off to the rookie Turdell Middleton of Memphis State. Now watch this youngster go. He is gifted with great speed to the left sideline and then down it all alone. He goes 96 yards for a touchdown. Best thing that happened to Green Bay all day. The only good thing, they were trailing 17-10 at that point. But reflecting the early going, we go back to the first quarter. Kansas City leading 3-0. Mike Livingston back to pass. Looking for number 89. And it's no longer Otis Taylor. In the current scheme of things, it's Henry Marshall. At that point, it was 10 to nothing. Kansas City won the ball game 20 to 10. Gave the game ball to the departed coach, Paul Wiggins. Buffaloes lost the juice. That at Schaefer Stadium, Foxborough, Massachusetts. But what happened to New England shouldn't happen to a dog. This reflecting their futility on the day. Broken deep to the usually impeccable Darrell Stingley, 84. But all alone, he drops the pass. And then during New England's first possession miss, Russ Francis, the huge tight end being helped off the field. Three cracked ribs out indefinitely. And Buffalo leading 7 to nothing in the first quarter with this. Roland Hux, the second-year man from North Carolina State, gained 155 yards on the day, more than any AFC back this year. Here you see him going 66 yards to the four-yard line. Two plays later, Jim Braxton poured it in. That made it 14 to nothing, Buffalo. And then, with the crowd in stunning disbelief, Carson Long kicked off. The ball taken in by the number one draft choice, Raymond Claiborne, who himself has extraordinary speed and balance. And he's proving it right here as he returns the kickoff 93 yards for a touchdown. That made it 14 to 7. Claiborne just looking back and holding the ball aloft. The personal triumph. That's all it was to be for New England. Claiborne's personal triumph because in the third quarter, 
with Buffalo leading 17 to 7. Grogan, who couldn't get on track, throws. Doug Jones, 24, picks it up, gets up, and he jaunts in. Nobody near him. Touchdown. Buffalo won the game. Stunning upset, 24 to 14. So out of it away. You see Raymond Chester. He's trying to hit Lydell Mitchell over the middle. There's Dujic. He comes in, taps it away, and Raymond Chester is right there, picks it up. Makes a big game. Jones was hit very hard that time by Curtis. And a crossing pattern. They're trying to get Carr deep. Ball was underthrown, as you can see. Kenny Houston was laying back in there, as he's done so often. His headache is cleared up. <laughs> he may have it back again. And there's pretty. I mean, Jake Scott, number 13. They're yeah. going to call him clipping on that one. No question about that. They gave up five. Nine yards. Gangs it high. Their special team gets down under it quickly. Whoops. Not a good kick. Whoops. But nevertheless, no return. Baltimore will take over at the 37 with no return. 26-yard net on that kick for Mike Craig. He's upset. He doesn't like it. Mike Curtis, who comes in from the blitz the other side. You'll see right here from the back. There's Curtis. But that ball is right on the money. Over that. That's the McClinton, the middle linebacker. Right there. Boy, and he marks approaching. Looking on. Good play. No leaks, and he loses a yard. A yard and a half. Mike Curtis again. Right. Again, it was Mike Curtis along with Bill Brundage. 77. Well, they have to be wondering, what's got into Mike Curtis? He was Third down. And eight. Same pass. Fred Scott. Got it. Oh, touchdown. Yes, Freddy sir. Scott. Oh, a great catch. That's the lad from Amherst. Working on Gerard Williams once again. But I don't know how you can defend against it. Gerard Williams was close. The ball was perfectly thrown. Remarkable man. We spoke earlier, having completed already two years of medical school, University of Cincinnati, but he's playing football tonight. Puts the Baltimore Colts out in front, breaking a 3-3 tie that has existed since midway in the second quarter. Tony Leonard for the conversion. Offside, Baltimore. Offsides. Somebody. Yeah. Players shaking fingers at each other. Of course, if it's against the Redskins, it will be declined, which it is. Baltimore leads now 10 to 3. So our tie is broken. Offsides indicated against Washington. Absolutely declined. We'll be back in Baltimore in just a moment. Two tonight against Washington. Let's see like if we can pick up number 56, 7, 7 inning. Looked like they were trying to get him deep there in a hurry. He no, hit. it's off the cloud, Don. Well, it's one up. That Brown, David Lee to punt. David Lee fills one to the 15. Eddie Brown coughs it up, but the Redskins are right there to recover. Situation at the moment. No timeouts for Washington. Up one. He's got it with two seconds. But they will not get a playoff, I don't believe. Well, let's see. But they'll start it again. He started. Heisman is directing traffic, and the clock ran out. It's over. It is over. Heisman did not hear the gun, I'm sure. Forget it. The gun had sounded. It's over. And at Baltimore defeats the Washington Redskins 10-3. Let's see a little performance tonight. Joe Heisman. Sterling performance by the Baltimore defense. Different kind of game that I was looking for, Frank. I